Greetings, Steve Scaisebrook. A little late this week, but a lot been going on. So um, I'm going to go through what I can and show you the things I've been doing and talk about CPD. And um, the subject for this week is going to be books. An interesting look, I think you'll find. But for starters, um, welcome to this AT CPD podcast, CPD for Architectural Technologists. And um, this week we're going to touch on a little bit about weather, but more on books. And books is very interesting. So let's go on to the main page and um, bring up the screen with me on the top right hand side in my little webcam. Um, and then the main page that we've got, which is the AT CPD. Um, and what I can do on this is I can actually go to the complete list of webinars that we've got actually um, working for us. Now, um, I've listed out one that was on the other day, which was BIM um, Server um, Center Workflow. Um, I couldn't attend that because of university commitments, but um, I hope somebody did. And normally I'll be able to put up a list of um, recordings that were made. Now, on the archive of past webinars, um, I have actually started to do this now. And a link, um, if I can find it or somebody sends it to me, I will put a, a link to the recordings. Now, the last one from uh, Navisworks, um, they've actually sent me a link for that. So there's a recording of the event there. Proctor Group, they're very excellent um, uh, presentation on uh, building refurbishment. Um, they've actually got it onto YouTube. So you can go and look at YouTube um, for their site. And in fact, all the other um, very excellent webinars that they've given. Um, the CIAT uh, Awards of the Digital Showcase. Um, I've not seen anything come out yet from CIAT. Um, hopefully there will be one. Um, and just to mention, Adelia, who was one of our students uh, from last year, won the, one of the awards um, for her work and report. Um, and it's actually in the AT magazine that's just come out. And in fact, if I just lift it down and bring it back up again, here we go. That's the new one. And just to uh, blow my own trumpet, there's an article that I wrote on CPD in the back page. So if you can, um, go and have a look at that. But a lot in there. Very well done, Adelia. So let's go back onto the complete list um, that we've got up here. And you'll see down there that there is quite a few coming up. Wessex region from CIAT. I've got one on the 16th of December. Um, discussion with Paul Smith um, on the Elm Housing in Bristol, future of housing in Bristol. That could be very interesting. In fact, they've also listed another one for the 6th of January um, with a uh, personal growth CV and job advice, grow to succeed. Um, I quite like the idea of this. We were talking about this with the students yesterday about um, how to apply and what to do. So um, I'm, I'm interested in this enormously and see what they do. So what else have I got? Civic Voice coming up on the 22nd of January. Um, that'll be interesting. And um, I quite like their lectures. Um, fire safety information for le lectures with no real data structure. Um, I've listed all these as best as I can. Um, part B, fire and safety, some new information. There's a link down there. Open Culture have got some good stuff there. You've got to register to get it. Uh, DBE, the digital built environment, um, they are constantly sending stuff out and it really is worth your while registering and getting your own feed for that one. The Architects newspaper, US based and generally they want money for you attending their site. So um, if you do need to, um, to do it, fine, pay your way. But um, I think it's um, a bit expensive. But there you go. Um, Digimap. Um, we use digi digital maps so much in our profession, and it's worthwhile um, keeping up to date with how they do it. And there is a lot of help on the Digimap site. I've given you a link there. Now, a new one I've put up is think tanks. Um, I'm doing a lot of research on climate change at the moment, 
and you would not believe the influence these think tanks have. They build up reports and offer advice to government ministers. So the government ministers are generally ignorant of what's going on out in the world. They're not in the profession, so they rely upon think tanks to give them that information. And whether or not it's right, but they can be quite biased in their opinion. So um, I'm starting to get into think tanks and to understand what they're all about and how they work and the people who work for them. And of course, um, Google can't be far away when you're doing research in any shape or form. And Google Data Studio is becoming interesting in the way that they're allowing you to handle data. Um, YouTube, God, you've just got to go onto YouTube for so much. Uh, COPS, um, a link onto YouTube for their webinars on thermal imaging. A um, lot of stuff from them. Open City, um, Accelerate the Open City, um, they've got a lot of stuff there. Uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business. Now, it's an interesting link, link and um, you've got to go and look at this, but about the CFO, the, uh, the Alphabet and Google. So Alphabet is the parent company. Google is one of their subsidiaries, funnily enough. Um, but go and have a look at that. There's a lot going on in, in that particular area. Now, this guy, Cold Fusion, um, he does some very interesting webinars on various subjects, mostly to do with tech and big companies. But hey ho, they are very good. Proctors, I've already mentioned. Now, Khan is, is an interesting academy. It's like lectures online. Um, some you have to pay for, some you don't. My own site for SCAES, for my own bits and pieces of collections of stuff mostly my own lectures so if you want one of my lectures past students go and look at it uh, if you're not one of my students please go along and have a look and see the lectures a lot of them are getting videos added to them now so you can hear me talking about it rather than just reading the text and there's a lot going on about their weather which is what i put on the beginning of this about the earth's orbit um air movement 30 years into the future that's an interesting one because the internet at the end of this year is 30 years old as we know it now obviously it existed before that but the internet that we now and know and understand is 30 years old so it's it's worthwhile going and have a look at that to understand where we've been and where we're probably going we tend not to look at because we're architectural technologists or surveyors we tend to use the os mapping that's Hastings and northings for location of our buildings. But you cannot ignore latitude and longitude. It is so important in looking at sun path analysis, location of your building on the globe. And to be honest, a lot of countries just still use latitude and longitude. Now, because of the way that latitude and longitude works, then the longitude lines are curved slightly. So they're not that good for locating buildings. But, you know, we've got to understand what it is all about. So don't just look at Eastings and Northings. Expand and look at latitude and longitude as well. Um, and, of course, there's loads of other bits on there about... Um, I, I tend to like Tesla. Um, I, I see him pushing the market drastically. I've test-driven a Tesla. and I, I, I liked it, but it's a different drive altogether. What I'm looking for is an understanding of the replacement of these batteries. Um, lithium is being mined like crazy. Um, there are big deposits in Tibet, Australia, Mexico, and other areas around the world. And unless we're careful, we're going to have a lot of these batteries just hanging around doing nothing without being able to do much with them. So I'm interested in the future as far as the battery technology goes. And also, I'm not that convinced that the power stations that we've got, particularly in the UK, um, are doing the right job in terms of providing electricity. Some of them are still coal-fired, some of them are gas-fired, and we've got these new nuclear um, stations going up. And I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that we're looking at the supply chain in the right way. Um, We've got solar coming on, and an awful lot of wind being 
utilized and i'd like to see a better understanding of this and the way that it's fed into the grid and also more talk on it um i can um I got my 30 years into the future stuff. Now, another one which is very similar to Cold Fusion is Undecided with Matt Farrell. Now, Matt Farrell's going along the same route, but he's very specific in his projects rather than big companies. He's looking at the tech and he does delve into it very well. I, I strongly recommend you go and look at Undecided and um, have a look at the link that I've put. If, if you're just listening to this on the podcast, then fine, um, it's a great site to go and look at. Um, one of the buildings that I'm particularly interested in is Notre Dame in Paris and the way that they're rebuilding it. And there are some very useful videos up there, particularly for us as building surveyors, architects, architects, whatever. Go and have a look at it because of the way that they're rebuilding it is very, very interesting. Um, and because of the work that I've done with my practice before we shut it down, we did a lot on historic work. So go and have a look on historic playlists on YouTube. It, it's, it's not that bad. And of course, CIOB, CIAT and all the others, RICS, have got very good CPD sites. I've only put two up here at the moment. I can't find one for RICS. No doubt there is one and I'll put it up. Um, and of course, there are others out there who've got some very good links um, to um, podcasts and also um, webinars, and I'll put those up. Um, UK BIM Alliance, obviously, there's a load on there. The Green Building Store, now, they came to lecture to us at the university some time back, and the room was packed. It was very, very well attended, one of the best we've ever done. The Concrete Store, obviously, has got a load up there, and... If you're into SketchUp like I am, then SketchUp have got a load, I mean a load of videos to go and watch up there on every subject you can look at. British Standard Institute <coughs> is very, very good, and there's a lot of stuff up there on the using of that. And the IS, so the ICOS Science Conference, there is a lot on carbon data there, so I'd go and have a look at that. And if you're into um, climate change, then you've got to go and understand that. And, of course, the Digital Twins Fan Club podcast, which is not a bad site. Go and have a listen to that, and I'll go into podcasts in a moment. Um, and then the Ecological Building Systems, very interesting. And also the others um, that I've put up there. Um, and I did have completed webinars on this page, but now I've put it into its own page on the, um, on the, uh, on the website. Um, Reading is something I'll come into in a second or not a second or two. And here's the podcasts. I'm huge into podcasts. I love them. I listen to them constantly. I have a four-year-old flat-coated retriever, and I have to walk him a lot. So this is what I do when I'm walking along. I listen to podcasts. So go and have a look. See the, um, uh, the stuff that I've put up there. Um, my own podcast, which is one, this one will be um, – on Stitcher um, and also the Google one, and all the podcasts that I've done for this in the audio format will be there. And also all the uh, show notes that I've done and the interesting stuff that I listed will be there as a show note for you to go and download if you want a link or anything like that. But most of the links are on the website. Um, Google Teacher Podcasts, if you're into Google in any way, then it's not just about Google's school system which is the equivalent of Moodle. Um, it's everything to do with Google and all their systems and their uh, help screens and the different ways of working. It's all there. Um, open culture, um, interesting again for education and media on Google. I'm a particular fan of the Guardian Audio Long Read. Now, this is a very, very good um, way of listening to an article. And they're usually about 15 to 20 minutes long. And, of course, with Brexit going on at the moment and other things with the USA presidential elections going strange in all sorts of ways, then they've got some excellent reads there. And they usually, it's the author who, um, who reads it. So it often is very, very good. Wired, um, I'm going to show you my Wired magazine in the moment when I look at the reading. And the books but wide magazine both the us and the uk versions are excellent reads if you're into anything techie and of course data science at home 
um, the Digital Twin Fan Club podcast, which I mentioned before, Beyond BIM. Um, now, this is this is a BIM pod centric podcast podcast that a very good friend of mine now, um, Erica Pant or Dr. Erica Pant, she's just got her PhD. Um, is doing and it is very very specific into into BIM, and I strongly recommend she has some great people um, listening uh, coming in and talking, and it's well worth listening to. Nice link there. Um, also, the World Business Report. Um, I I like this simply because if you don't understand how the world works, you'll never get on in it. So go and listen to what's going on in terms of finance and currencies and political shenanigans because if you don't understand it you'll never never get on in this world going on from that there is a podcast called fresh air and fresh air with a lady called terry gross now terry gross is one of the best interviewers i've ever ever listened to she is very political astute and she gets some incredible people um um, coming onto her podcast and she interviews not in a way that it's aggressive it's more teasing out what she wants to hear and in that way you can read what we want to hear and then the guardian science weekly another great podcast that is well worth listening to and another one lex friedman now lex is a ai guy and i'm into ai and so you've really got to listen to lex slowly it's very deep and very, very entertaining if you're into any shape or form of AI. And I quite like him. He does talk very sensibly and very slowly. And if he thinks he needs to explain something, he will. And it's very, very, very good. Uh, five, science, five Live Science is obviously a radio program and it is very good, available on, on, on both Stitcher and podcast, um, a Google podcast. Love it. And then The Future of Life, another very interesting um, podcast that I quite like. This Week in Google. Now, um, this, is, this is really a very entertaining series of um of podcasts it's not just one there are loads of podcasts and also webinars and their interviews talk shows discussions experts coming on for all sorts of different things leo laporte is the guy that runs it and he is another very excellent presentator so mostly all the stuff's on twitter on on twitch sorry on twit.tv and go and look at it and they're all there on youtube there's about six or seven at the moment but many of them he transports over to podcasts as well so that's that's it really um as far as cpd is concerned a, a lot of you can be going at over the christmas period both on the webinars that's going to be up there the ones that are already been played and you can go back and look at them but also um when you're out walking or just trying to recover from all that booze and food go and put a podcast on and listen to it um i'm um i've got about four saved up at the moment that i really do want to listen to and i've also got audio books and i'm listening to a couple at the moment mostly fiction but hey ho you know it's it's a nice delve into the mind so that's really all i've got on the main page on terms of podcasts and webinars for your cpd so what i'm going to do at the moment is go on to the other side of it and that is the way that i've been buying and i've started to go and get old copies of books that i went through college with and beyond now the one i want to introduce you to is mitchell's and this is not the mitchell's that you will have seen in the libraries and maybe you've got a copy or one of the series these are the old ones and this is the um the advanced book and it, it is you know these books are really great and this is um this is a book that was around in the early 40s and beyond that uh, into the late 1800s and i've got one from then why am I looking at old books like this? Well, I have in my time done an awful lot of 
construction work or alterations to old historic buildings. And if you don't understand that the way that the building was put together, you are never, ever going to get a understanding of how you're going to tie the new into the old and how you're going to deal with the old. It's no good coming up and saying, well, the building's got to fit, you know, that's it, and ignore what's been done 40 or 100 years ago. You've got to understand the construction methods. And therefore, I am convinced that you need to have copies of older construction books. And so this is my first stab at bringing them in and, you know, plastering tools. And when you open this one, the first one, the chapter one, right at the beginning, limes and cements. Don't please just go on and just add ordinary modern day cement onto an older building. Chances are they are built with lime and therefore you've got to allow lime to move and groove in the way that it will. It never sets properly and the building is allowed to move. Modern day cements are not in that favour. Once they're set, they're set and they're rigid. And so you've got to allow for this movement. And if you don't understand lime, then go back and look at the older books because the way that it was made is not the way that it's made now. It was made in a pit and it's often as not different to what you can buy in the market now. I used to have a very good representative from one of the lime manufacturers. And if I had any doubts, I called him out. Um, sadly, he's retired and I've lost track of the company but they're out there. Um, the tools that we used, the different types of bricks. One of the things I do with my students when this first year and second year is I take them out onto a walk. And in that walk, I take them around the back end of Digbeth into Birmingham. Uh, it's the old quarter of Birmingham. And in that way, you get an awful lot of different types and sizes of bricks. And it is important to understand that there are maybe 30 or 40 different size bricks in the marketplace prior to when we had standardization. So don't just think your brick is going to fit because coursing will go out if you don't understand that simple um, piece of construction. Um, different types of glass. All of these are in here. Thicknesses of walls as they were then in the early 40s. Um, I've got another book here, and I'll just replace that and pull that one back out. And this is a much older book, as you can see. And it is so well preserved. And it cost me about eight or nine quid, I think. And this one is a very early copy of, um, and as you can see, the 17th edition. It is so early. I'm looking for younger ones if I can find them. Um, but they do go in, and this particular one is the beginner's book, and here they talk about just writing. I mean, I used to get hammered terribly because of my writing, but I learned, and all my drawings now, you know, the script was pretty good. Um, doesn't mean to say I carried across, but all the construction different types are here. It's all there to be researched and looked at. This... Now, if you're into geometry, geometry in any way, then you've got to understand Euclid. And it is about the different ways of understanding geometry. Um, I thoroughly recommend reading it. It's not heavy. You've just got to understand it. OK, your computer and your CAD system does the bulk of the work for you. But if you don't put it in right, it'll come out wrong and you'll never understand why. So read the books like this this didn't cost an awful lot i found it online on ebay as soon as i saw it i thought gotta have a copy of this because i'm into um geometry in a huge way i love the subject and just looking at angles and understanding how they work and why they work and the formulas um it's all there not all the cad programs have got really good answers to the problems so if in doubt Go back, look it up, look the formula up, use a spreadsheet to work the formula out if you want to, but it's all there in there and the way it works. Um, I'm going to change this now for a bit of reading I'm doing at the moment, and I've, I've left the cover um, off this particular one, but this one is a, is a guy called Jonathan Porritt. Now, Jonathan is a very 
interesting author. It's called A Hope in Hell, and it's about the confrontation of the climate change. And in it, he has his own, in brackets, particular understanding of the political side of it. He's American, so therefore it's centered on Trump and his fans. But the way he understands climate change and the references he's made are invaluable. So I'm currently, oh, two thirds, maybe a bit more about that, um, over into that book. And I'm into that in a big way. I'm doing a lot of research on the way that um, climate change is, is going at the moment. And it's, it's a fascinating subject. Let me introduce to you my book. And this is, this is my day book. Now, my day books are my way of understanding and jotting notes down, little sketches or whatever. I've gone through all sorts of different books. Freebies from good reps who've come in. And I've just stood up and I just brought in this one. This is the Bowder one. And this is my Bowder um, notebook that I had. And I had several of these. And as you can see, um, I've got little tabs in there. And it's great. But I suddenly found this. Now, this is a spiral bound. It's a metal spiral bound. And the beauty of this is when you open it up, it lays flat. And in this particular one, like in the Bowder one, I've got a dot grid. It's there for me to use to reference lines and everything else and also scale. Because what I've done is I've put down on the front of it what the scale is, a different 1 to 10, 1 to 100. And so each of the squares on the dot, I know what the distance is. And I just love it the way that we can um, just look at notes and put them in as you can see i've been making a whole load of notes um, and the way that things work um bit on the kosh brothers or kush brothers in the us they own you know one of the richest families out two brothers who own the oil industry and it's interesting to read how they um operate um early days on that one were my opinions on them but at the moment i'm reading it and i'm making notes in my book and it's a very easy way of working. Okay, let's move on. Um, and I'm going to bring down this book. Now, this is what took me through college, Barry. Now, Barry is also one of the great books, architect by training um, down in Brixton in the School of Building. And so all the sketches and the things in here are exceedingly good. They are great to read. And... It's the one book that I constantly went back to. And look at this, it's spiral bound, which means it lays flat. Now, when I had a drawing board, this was huge because at the top of my drawing board, I could open up to the page and reference it, all the notes I've made on a subject or a detail, and I put it at the top and I redrew it. So I'm into spiral bound. I think it's a great way of working. Okay, let's move on. My books now become my magazines. And let's put that over there. And let's look into the different magazines I've got. And that's the AT magazine, the finalists of the 2000, all the awards that have come. I mean, if you're an AT, even a student member or an associate member now, I hope if you've got your degree, then you'll get a copy of this. And if you're an associate member, why aren't you making ready to go up onto Chartered? It is a great institute. I've been a member right back from my first times when I started to, to work um, to become a student. And these magazines that are sent out, there are several, and also a weekly one that comes out on email. Just as good. Why instrumentation? Well, because the way that the digital world and data is coming, if you don't understand some of the technology that we're going to have to embed into our buildings. So I started taking this instrumentation monthly it is exceedingly good okay some of it is way beyond my needs but every now and again they show something that i'm interested in and the way that we can control and get data for the buildings wired magazine i i pay for this i don't mind admitting and uh, because of the way that it works if you look around you'll find one of these exceedingly cheap deals and if you sort of keep your wits about you and look for it. They will offer another exceedingly good deal for you to stay on board. But it's a magazine that I adore. 
it's mostly tech in the way that it is but it looks at everything and everything is in these magazines but also you get you can go online pick it all up lots of stuff out there that is really good and it's a magazine that i love now i i've got a nikon um um i've got a, a d7500 and it's a really good mag um, magazine camera and you have to understand how to use it. And I must admit, the gear on it is beyond my understanding, some of it. But unless you start looking and understanding and watching the the um, uh, the news feeds and the way that people are taking photographs and for the reasons why, then you'll never get on in photography. And I am a massive fan of taking pictures. Um, and my Nikon allows me to do things that my my not iPhone, my Pixel 3 is very good, but the Nikon is the next step up in getting quality photographs. And I've got a lot on construction, detailing, landscapes, you name it, I've got it. And I've got, what, 20, 30,000 photographs in Google system. Do it. Right, a cup of tea time, I think. Here we go. My good lady, we shouted at me. It's gone cold. It hasn't. Develop 3D. Now, this is a magazine that is free. You just got to sign up for it. And their way of looking at the 3D market is inclusive, absolutely inclusive. And I would strongly recommend you getting a copy and having it come through. It's available in both digital and also in paper. And as far as I know, it's free. And it's the way that the digital market is working in 3D, from just using 3D to printing 3D. Excellent magazine. If you're an AT, come on, guys. There is nothing you can't do without looking at roofing today. Yes, it is very manufacturer-centric orientated, but there are some excellent um, manufacturers in here who offer brilliant advice. And some of the articles are, again, exceedingly good. It's free. Just go and look up roofing today and sign up for it and get your own copy in the post. It comes every other month, I think, something like that, every quarterly maybe. Um, but I, I read this and copy the articles if they're interesting to me or follow it through onto the manufacturers. And you cannot get away without looking at this. It's all roofing from flat roofing to pitched roofing to thatching. Unbelievably good. So that's it, really. Um, as far as I can remember, that's all the stuff that I wanted to talk about. My show notes um, say that. I can't give you any more. Uh, my books are beginning to increase in their um, numbers because I'm buying older books now to understand old construction. Strongly recommend that you do the same. So um, I think that's about it. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this. If you're on the audible side, then um, I hope that I've given you enough to go with. If you're on the YouTube side, then you've got all the, the stuff that I've been showing you. Um, I think there is, um, let's go back onto the main page and you can see the podcast up there for everything else. Um, the other one that you may want to look at is my site, skase.com co.uk and that will bring up my architectural technologies tutorials and all my lectures are on there um all the lectures there look all the different ones that i've got and i'm putting up absolutely load up there a lot have got videos on now so um go and enjoy them so that's it many thanks for uh attending um and i will i hope uh see you soon cheers <laughs>